12. Prepare for bushcraft in a beautiful, cold Canadian wilderness. It's about minus 20 degrees today, so it is freezing. I'm grateful so much that you could tune in. So today we are going to talk about the Wilderness Survival Bag, sometimes known as the 10C Bag, and some of its uses. Um, so inside this bag carries everything that I need to survive in a northern environment, right, in Boreal or um, other types of forest here in the north, uh, so like a Carolinian forest. So this bag is really important. Uh, it is so important that we tell our students, if you have the bag, keep this bag on you when you're in a wilderness environment. And again, uh, a wilderness environment is three hours or more from help. So if I've canoed in three hours, I'm in the wilderness. Uh, you know, if I've walked in three hours and it's going to take rescue guys that time to get to me, I'm in the wilderness. Um, so you get this bag and you put a bunch of stuff in it. And let's talk about some scenarios that you would need what's in this bag. So the first one is, and it's surprisingly fairly common. So I go out and I canoe out into some beautiful wilderness. It's gorgeous. I set up camp in some remote area. And then I'm like, well, you know what? I gotta go poop. So you take your uh, your poop kit, right, with the toilet paper and all that stuff, and you go and you find your your, your poop kit, and you find a great place to, to go to the bathroom, and you're leaning up against a tree or however you do it, and you look over at your campsite, bears, holy crap. Bears have gotten into my campsite. Not just bears, a mama bear and her cubs. What are you gonna do about it? You gonna go chase them with a stick? <laughs> you will become part of the landscape. No, you're gonna to have to sit there and watch these bears use your, your bear barrel as a pinata, trying to knock it down, right? You're gonna watch them destroy your tent, you're gonna watch them wreck through your stuff. Now what do you do? You're hours and hours, a day's paddle or whatever away from, and, and it's getting dark, right? What's in this? Save your life. Another scenario, right? So you decide uh, to pack up all your stuff. You have all your gear and everything packed in your canoe, right? Oh crap, I forgot something. You go back up to look for your knife or whatever it is you forgot, sunglasses, whatever, and your canoe with all the gear in it floats away. You're gonna swim after it? You probably could, but if you don't know what's in that water, you might get sliced and diced, who knows, right? If it's windy or it's really bad, bad water, you're not going in there without the canoe. So now what do you do? Again, you're stuck. Um, until you can think your way through the situation. I can give you tons and tons of other examples. So these bags, and it doesn't have to be this like sexy, tactical, olive drab bag with the molly or I don't know, whatever, molly on the side there. It doesn't have to be this. It can be whatever bag you want. If you're super bushcraft, it can be the haversack. It can be whatever you want. Um, but have one of these and have all of the things of the 10 C's in the bag so that you can survive. So. Without me continuing to talk, let's get into this bag and I'm gonna show you what's in it and how it can save your life. All right, so let's get into this bag and its contents. Um, again, this bag or a bag similar to this should be on your person at all times in the woods. Again, a haversack, it doesn't matter. I don't know if you can make one that fits on your ankle or your Crocs, it doesn't matter. Have this on you at all times, right? Except maybe even when you're sleeping, and if you can sleep with it comfortably, make it a pillow. Don't wander around the woods without it, right? And we'll get into exactly why. So, first thing that's in it, we'll just go through it bit by bit. Uh, we have some other videos uh, with similar content on this. Uh, so this is Vaseline. Um, Vaseline and cotton balls, it burns very well. The proper name for Vaseline is petroleum. What do you fill your, your, your gasoline cars with? Petrol. It burns. It's very good to have, so it burns, right? I have a, a, a little cap here, and inside here is uh, usually like cotton balls and stuff like that. This is a little teeny survival kit, right? Uh, including a needle and thread, and uh, some Q-tips and stuff like that, right? You can never have too much stuff in this bag. Random stuff is always good to have, right? So this takes care of the combustion, right? Combustion. All right, I have trail tape in case I manage to get lost. You can tie it around your um, your different spots around, uh, you know, like if I don't, not sure if I have to go left or right, that's good for that, okay? So there's your trail marker. So let's get into the main pouchy section here. So I've got all kinds of great stuff. Compass, if you know how to use a compass, it is a really great tool. If you do not know how to use a compass, learn how to use a compass. Because you know what that mirror does right there? You know what it shows you? 
it shows me, hey, look, look who's lost. That's what that shows you. Um, it can also be used for signaling and all kinds of stuff. Compass with the mirror, really important. All right, cotton cloth. So this is orange, so it's signal orange color. I can use this for all kinds of great things. Um, you just look up stuff about bandanas or whatever, that's basically what it is. Dollar store find, I'm really big on using the dollar store to find most of this stuff. Uh, you can use it for filtering, you can use it for tying wounds, all kinds of, of great, great stuff. Cover, why shelter? This is one of those uh, emergency blankets. Fun fact about these potato chip bags, like Doritos or whatever, they are made from these, just heavier, thicker quality ones. So your emergency shelter, all right? Thumb around in here. Lighter, most sophisticated fire starting tool known to humans, available also at the dollar store, all right? Cordage, I choose uh, super bright orange. This has a little reflecto stuff in it. So if I'm wandering around at night, I don't trip over it more than necessary. Signal mirror, right? Again, for communication. Right, we have a bunch of different videos on how to use that, but uh, yeah, signal mirror, very important. All right, Let's see what else we got in here. We got cutting tools, so we got tiny fixed blade knife. One of my favorite fixed blade knives. We actually have some videos on this, right? So it's fixed blade and it's full tang. Uh, not sure why I have two in here, but whatever. Um, yeah, so we've got we've got cutting covered. All right, so let's go in here again. More Vaseline. These little tins again. Dollar store, fine. Right, now I have a tin can. If I need it for something, I can turn this into a candle for candling. Um, and of course, it's filled with Vaseline for, for uh, ignition sources. Again, fire is so important, especially living in a northern climate. Magnesium rod with one of those uh, poor quality ferro rods. I've got uh, more C for candling. It's uh, light, right? Those chemical lights and another little lighter. These lighters in the super cold weather don't always work. Be wary of that. I'm sure I'll leave all this stuff out. That in the very super cold, they don't always work. All right, so in, in this side here, we got more stuff, right? Again, we've got our Speedy Sharp to sharpen our knives and tools, um, right? We got more lights right there. And this here little bad boy is filled with cotton balls. Another C. So, cotton balls. Lots and lots of cotton balls in there. Great for ignition, right? Uh, my favorite fire starting tool is the cotton ball. They are dry, they are lightweight. Again, they are available at the dollar store. And yeah, you can, you can get those, put them in there quite easily. Uh, matches, again, three methods of starting a fire, right? We always talk about that. Ferro rod, matches, lighter. If any one of these bad boys fails, I've got backups, right? Super, super important. Again, I'm not sure why there's like a nail file in there, but whatever. And uh, uh, this little chemical light. So, all that stuff is in there. So, the other thing to consider is, what if I blow, uh, I blow a piece of equipment? So, this is connection, right? So in here, and again, we've got lots of videos on these. Uh, there's a sewing kit, right? So I've got my sewing needle or sail needle right there and a bunch of uh, connection material, which is just right. So I've got my, my, my 10 C's here, everything but a container, um, right? And I have a little cloth as well. You never know, not so much in the cold, but in the warm, I'm gonna need it. I'll wipe myself down, wash myself. I, I don't know, any number of reasons, polish, camera lens, whatever, whatever I, I can have it in, uh, whatever you can think of. It's up to your imagination. So with all this stuff, you can see it's not a lot of stuff. It fits in a, in a bag. I could put all of this together, pack it in the bag, keep it on me at all times, and I've got everything I need, right? Now you can get a lot deeper into all of this stuff and how it works, uh, but for this video, it basically just shows you when you're out in the woods, make sure you've got all of this stuff. Keep it on you at all times. And you'll see I have multiple of these. So this is basically the student version. You can see all this stuff is brand new. This is for demonstration stuff. Um, but like on my dog sled bike, I've got one of the, a very similar one with equipment in it, right? When I go out into the back country on personal trips and journeys, I've got one. When I take students out, I've got like nine of these and I hand one to every student and I'm like, for the love of God, don't leave without this. We went into a couple of scenarios of how you might come upon needing this, right? And you just never know. As long as you've got all these tools and equipment, I'm probably going to be able to survive. 
As always, I am Wolf for Barefoot Bushcraft, and I want to thank you so much for tuning in. I will put our social media links right here on the screen. So, right there, we've got the Facebook. And we have Instagram for lots of fancy photos. And of course, website right there. We're also on all the really other like obscure um, uh, social media websites like Ello and MeWe and all that stuff. You can find us on all those as well, but they're not that popular. Um, and that's just under Barefoot Bushcraft. So again, I wanna thank you so much for tuning into this video. We would not exist uh, without the community like you coming and visiting and taking our courses, watching, liking, and subscribing our videos. Thank you for watching. I'm Wolf for Barefoot Pushcraft. Please consider subscribing. <laughs>